Cool, rock and roll. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Let me just close my mail so it doesn't beep at us. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> should close a few things, oopsie. Beeps too. Right, I know. There's so many beefy things online. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, that's down. I should have these done too, but there we go. All right. So many things open. I'm in a hotel, so uh -huh. I try to make the background. <laughs> that's all good. You're fine. Somewhat appealing. I'm like, it's a, it's a bathroom door. It works. The wall. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Super You're cool. in Hawaii? Yeah, I'm in um, Kauai right now, so I'm one of the islands, and I'm here for a couple of days, and then out to Costa Rica. Ooh, nice. Yes. Where about to you? I'm in um, California, Laguna Beach right now. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I just got in today, so I was been like, got up at 3.30 for the flight. And... Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I'm glad we made the time work in the end. It's awesome. I know. So sorry about it. I'm not sure what happened last time, but okay. I apologize. For it's our, perfect. It's meant to be now. <laughs> yeah. Let's go throw these in. Cool. Hopefully, it's funny when I first got here, the signal wasn't great, but we're okay now. So cool. Um, so a couple things, just to sort of, I know it's like we say yes to these things. I'm like, what was it that I said yes to again? <laughs> yeah. So the topic scaling for passive profit. Uh -huh. We're talking about recurring income, passive income, leverage, leveraging your time. The audience is a lot of people that are doing like one-to-one -one coaching consulting. Okay. But want to transition more into a leverage model, like sell like more programs, one one to many, but they're not either they haven't started or they don't know they're not making the kind of sales that they've been hoping to make. And Got it. Feeling that. So that's kind of the um well, that was the idea in creating it, but that's who it's for. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> so the wrong map. Yeah. And um, interviews, we're keeping them pretty short. I'm just going to lock the room too, cool. not that I'm expecting anybody, but yeah. um, 25 minutes, we've been keeping them too, just to keep them short. So I think people get bored if they stay on cool. too long. And um, and then for your free gift, you don't need to include the link. I'll get you to explain it and then we'll have, have the link in there to share. Okay. Perfect. Sounds awesome. Any questions? No, ready to rock. Okay, awesome. So, is it Regan or Reagan? Regan, correct. Yeah. Regan. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know better. sometimes people start, and I'm like, "Wait, you're saying my name wrong. Start again." <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, <clears throat> let's do this. Cool. Hello, welcome to Scaling for Passive Profits, the masterclass series on producing passive profits, attracting new clients managing your mindset and boosting sales. I'm your host, Christina Jandali, and today we have Regan Hillier, who's a serial entrepreneur, philanthropist, mindset coach, global speaker, helping those who've got a big message to share and they want to get it out to the world, which I think is amazing. Speaking of the world, you've been traveling the world, you've been all over the place, so I'm glad that we were able to have you on, so thanks for coming on. You're so welcome. It's awesome to be here. So why don't you share a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are today? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think it started out very different um, to what you see now in terms of my business. You know, I have a, a multiple seven-figure business and multiple different online products and still do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Um, but, you know, I grew up in Auckland, New Zealand and kind of very much followed the... Um, like traditional way through education and school and university and realized at a young age that I didn't want to do what I was studying. I was studying to be an architect. And so I kind of, you know, left that university um, lecture in a moment and made a decision that I was going to find out what my purpose was. And that's really what threw me into personal um, development and wealth creation and, you know, going to seminars and events and coaching. And I was doing all of this like strategic stuff and not really seeing results. And then I started doing the inner work and I started working on me and my mindset and learning about energy and all that cool stuff and that's when everything started to shift 
And what's interesting is that people were watching me and they started coming to me and saying, hey, the Regan, like, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? Like, what, you know, I see your life is different now. Like, what are you doing? And I started just telling them, I was like, well, start doing this and this and stop doing that. And I started sharing what I was doing. And the cool thing was, is that people came back to me and they started thanking me and saying, Regan, like with what you shared with me, I've gone out and I've changed my life and my business and I've created results. And that was the first moment that I really felt a sense of purpose. And that was the first moment that I yeah. thought, oh my goodness, like this is so powerful. And so I never set out to become a coach. I never was like, I wanna be a life coach ever. <laughs> um, it kind of happened by default. Um, and I, I remember thinking, wow, imagine if I could actually charge money for this. Imagine if I could help people and get something in exchange. And that's kind of where my coaching journey started. So I love that sort of organically mm -hmm. doing what, what you were doing, figuring out this is working, people paying attention, right. wanting to know exactly what you're doing. So what would you say were some of the biggest shifts for you? What were a couple of the pieces that really made a big difference in your mindset and your thinking and the way that you're approaching your business? Oh, definitely. I think, you know, I was so unaware of the internal game. I was so unaware. Like, I was looking outside of myself for everything. I was looking at how do you invest in property? How do you launch a business? What is my marketing about? Like I was totally outside of myself, <laughs> right? And I had a mentor that was like, Regan, you've got it all backwards. It's like 80% the internal game and then 20% what you do on the outside. And so I think that's what, what really hit me. And when I got that and when I started really focusing on the 80% and looking at how do I change my identity? How do I I, you know, align myself to succeed? What does a daily ritual look like? Like I wasn't doing anything like that. And so I think when I ventured in that way, you know, I just, I just started seeing results so quickly. So tell us, what's your daily routine look like? My daily routine now is very much done off intuition. So when I started, I was like, okay, cool. I've got to do these five things and I've got to do them every day and I have to do it for an hour. Otherwise I'm going to fail. Like I was really well, like, that's what I did too. <laughs> Yeah, I was I so obsessed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's got to be this way because one coach had told me, here's what you do, right? And so now, you know, I get up in the morning and I literally tune into um, what I need and I ask myself, you know, what feels really, really, really good right now? What do I need right now? What does my soul need? And I really listen to that. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I need to go and like move my body and like listen to affirmations and work out. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I just need to be in silence for 20 minutes. And sometimes it's like, hmm, I'm feeling like fear or resistance around something in my business let me journal on that and so I kind of pull from all the different tools which I've dug into over the last 10 years and I really go off intuition and feeling and give myself what I need so I can set up my day so this is great so I love how you're talking about the fear showing up mm -hmm. because I think sometimes people have this opinion that fear disappears when right. we get to a certain level that you know it's it all goes away right things smooth sailing so what about people, because I think as people transition from one-to-one -one coaching or consulting and into more one-to-many, mm -hmm. there's a lot of the fears of, are enough people going to buy this? Are they going to be able to make enough money? Are they going to um, have enough people? What happens if they only sell one spot and they have to do this program and they're going to be... So what would you say to someone that has these fears? What are some ways that they can work through this? Totally, to to totally, fight? totally. And I've, I've gone through all those fears, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, and some of them still show up. Like I think people think that you turn into a robot when you become successful and you feel no more fear. But no, you just learn how to dance with it and you learn how to move through it. And so I think the big thing to know is that if you ignore the fear, if you numb it, if you push it away, if you pretend it's not there, ultimately you will receive what you're fearful of. And so I really think the game is actually instead looking the fear in the eye and understanding why is it there. You know, I think so many people try and just act in spite of the fear and that's not really going to work either. Like, I really think you need to understand why is it showing up? Like, it's showing up for a reason. And fear shows up to keep us safe, right? And so Absolutely. I love, yeah, I love telling my clients this example of imagine you're in the car and you're driving this car towards your vision and you're so clear on where you're going. You're like, that is my next launch. That is my next product. Those are the number of clients whatever it is right and at some point fear's gonna creep in and you realize that fears in the back, back seat and fear starts to like maybe cover your eyes so you can't see or maybe fear starts to strangle you so you can't breathe and that's where you've got a choice because it's gonna happen to everybody you either go you know what I can't handle this and you get out of the car and you stay where you are or you're like you know what fear I acknowledge you're there and I know that you're there to keep me safe, but I'm in charge right now, so I just need you to stay in the back seat. And you continue to move forward, knowing the fear is there, feeling the fear, but also being okay with it instead of trying to numb it or shut it down or just completely ignore it, right? 
Oh, I love that. It was such a great visual of being able to uh, have that perspective of seeing it that way. That's, that's huge. I think that, and I think, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of this talk of like flipping the script and changing one, you know, changing a fear into the opposite and thinking it's magically going to disappear or just to pre pretend it's not there. Right. And so you're really talking about acknowledging it there. It's always going to, there's always going to be those fears coming up no matter where you are but moving on in spite of it totally. and, and, take, and, and being the one that's stepping in control. Totally. Yeah. And look, I went through a stage where for a couple of years, I decided just to numb all of it. Right. And I was like, you know what? If fear shows up, that means that I'm not successful. It means that I'm not a good entrepreneur. And so I, I really started to numb fear. I numbed other emotions too, like sadness and doubt and all this other stuff <clears throat> that was coming up. And what's interesting is that the things that I numbed and ignored were the things which then showed up later because I hadn't dealt with it. So you can either deal with it now or you can deal with it later. So true. I, yeah, that's happened to me too. Right. <laughs> I've been through that too. Yeah, shove it away. It always comes back. Right. <laughs> Until you have the opportunity to open it up. So what would you say if someone is, maybe they've been so focused on the strategy mm -hmm. and they're thinking, okay, I've been doing all this. I've been checking off all the boxes, but it's not working. So when we're talking about the internal game being such a big percent, like, you know, mm -hmm. 80, 20, you're talking about it being a percent, where would you lead them into where to start? Like, where to, how do they start when it comes to mindset work? How do they start when it comes to this personal development? Totally. Look, I think there's so many different options and so many different routes that you can go down. And I think too many people go, oh, like, what did that mentor do? Or what did that guru do? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing because that must be the secret answer. And what I find when talking to really successful people is it's not that they've all got there the same way. But often what they have done is they've listened to what's showing up and what's present for them. And so I know for me, you know, the things which I've learned or the coaches that I've invested in or the courses that I've done, which has made the biggest impact, it's because they've shown up in my world and I've felt some sort of pull or nudge to it. And it's not always logical. It's not always convenient. <laughs> You're not always going to understand it. You're not going to see it coming. Sometimes it's like, really? What? That? Like, that's so not me, right? But you know, it's really this ability to listen to the pulls and the nudges and I feel like that's what's going to get you there you know even in this conversation if we talk about NLP or hypnosis or energy work even just the word you can feel something in your body when it's like oh what is that like I'm curious about that yeah. listen to that stuff and I've found that the more that I do that and listen to that that'll lead you down the path of the internal work that's your medicine right now so th this is something so simple, mm -hmm. right? And yet so powerful is really right. tuning into that feeling, tuning into yourself, tuning into what you're drawn to and not necessarily having to have it all logically <laughs> figured out, totally. but trusting in yourself to, to lead you the way. I love that. That's beautiful. Totally. So what would you say, like in your entrepreneurial journey, what would you say has been like your biggest mistake or aha moment or this sort of realization that hit you? on the back end of, of something that felt like it was the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's been many. Um, I feel like my <laughs> my whole entrepreneurial journey is just like falling forward and learning from all the falls, right? Um, but the differences between me and maybe someone else is I keep choosing to fall forward. That's the only difference. Yeah. But look, in line with what we were just talking about, I think one of the, the biggest things which I learned, especially early on, um, was that when I didn't listen to the pulls, when I didn't listen to the nudges, and when I looked for answers out side of myself that's that's when things slowed down or that's when things didn't flow or that's when I ended up you know investing a lot of money in something and not getting a return or it didn't work or it was like oh this doesn't feel good or it's really hard it's often because I was looking outside of myself and and I kind of didn't realize how easy it could be of like wow like let's go within to actually check in on this first so I think that's been one of the biggest lessons um, and I still tap into that daily and I still if I catch myself going oh what's that entrepreneur doing to scale and do this yeah. no like don't look left don't look right come back within and you know if you're working especially with a coach or a mentor that's in alignment with you that's in tune with you that can help you tap deeper into your intuition instead of telling you the magic answer like that's a really powerful place to be in that's huge absolutely and it's giving it's giving you the opportunity to step into your power as mm -hmm. well and connecting with yourself so tell us like a little bit about how do you come up with your next idea and what does that process look for you look like for you from coming up with the idea to actually seeing it through to fruition? 
Yeah, definitely. So um, I, I think there's two ways that I do this. Sometimes the idea whacks me on the head, literally. Like, you know, when you get woken up at night or you're riding a bike and you just have this idea and you're like, what is that? Like, what does that look like? And so I've learned to catch those because I really believe that those are downloads and they're coming through. And how many times have you had an idea like that, by the way, where you don't act on it and then someone else steals your damn idea, right? Totally, yes. <laughs> and you turn around and you're like, that was my idea. And it was like, no, that was an idea which was given to you, but you didn't have the capacity to grab it and act on it, right? And so, so yeah, I've really learned to listen to those things. And now the other way to do it is I believe there's also a lot sitting within you, which you can pull out. So I love journaling as a tool for the inner work, which then leads to the strategy, right? And so I love sitting down and simply asking myself, okay, if I was to launch something, a product or a service right now that was in total alignment with my vision that felt really, really, really good good, what would I choose to unleash? And I might go and create like 5, 10, 20, 30 different ideas and you'll feel the ones again which resonate, which which is like, yeah, that, that feels amazing, that feels really fun. And again, what most people do is they fall in this trap, especially early on in entrepreneurship and they think, but will people buy it? Will someone like it? Is someone else doing that? Like all this stuff comes and that's when you have to be like, mm, no, okay, like, excuse me, ciao. <laughs> I'm not falling into those thought patterns, but instead what feels really, really, really fun and exciting for me and then of course checking is there a need? Is this something that's going to add value? And then going into more the marketing side of things. So on the marketing side of things, speaking of, I see you do a lot of video uh -huh. in your business. You have a lot of connections with people. What are some of the um, marketing pieces or tactics that you use and love? Oh my gosh, there's a lot. And um, I think it's it's interesting to look at my business now because there's a lot of moving pieces. Um, but it's also interesting to look at like, where did it all start as well? And, you know, to give you and, and everyone watching some reference on this, you know, to, to work with me for 12 months as a private full on one-on-one -on -one coach, it's a million dollars a year. But I want people to know that nearly 10 years ago, I charged for 12 weeks of coaching. So being on the phone with someone for like two hours once a week, I charged three Three hundred dollars for that package, right? Wow. So I, I just want people to feel that firstly, right? Because yeah. it's very easy now to be like, yeah, let's talk about funnels and this and that. But okay, that's where I started, right? And I had these one-on-one -on -one people that were paying me three hundred dollars for twelve weeks. Like, I'm pretty sure that's way below minimum wage. Like that's slave labor. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> <saying> <laughs> slavery. <laughs> but that's where my value was at as well, right? So um, in terms of that, you know, I started out and and I, I very quickly got to a place where I was like, okay, cool. I love the one-on-one. -on -one. I love um, touching and inspiring people like that. But how do I how do I scale this a little bit so that I have a bigger impact and can reach more people? And then that's when I went into live events. And so the first thing that I did there is um, never forget this. I, I wasn't really online. I wasn't using Facebook. I actually used a website called meetup.com, which some people yeah. may be familiar <laughs> with, right? And so I set up a meetup account and I started building tribes on meetup. And I started literally um, creating these groups where people could come and just hang out just for free and chat and meet each other. And of course I was the host and they wanted to get to know me and what did I do? And then I would invite them through into like a three hour talk or a one hour talk or a workshop and go from there. And then that would lead into another workshop. So that was like my very first marketing piece. And you know, now there's so much in terms of different Facebook funnels and ads and live events and there's so much going on. Okay. But, <laughs> that's wonderful. That's what I did at the beginning too. I started a meetup group. <laughs> right. And it's so simple for anyone to do this. And we've yes. got so much more available now. You can set up a free Facebook tribe instead of a, a meetup group. Um, but it depends how you want to do it. Remembering that this isn't the secret strategy, but this is what felt like super amazing, hell yes, fun for me at that moment. Right now, it wouldn't be my fun. I don't want to do that. But you know, you can really tune into like, okay, like what feels amazing for marketing? Marketing should feel fun. It should be easy. It should be something that you're really excited about. So true. Yeah. So you went from the meetup and then what, um, and then you're talking about doing live events. So you moved in more from meetups into doing live events. Uh huh. Yeah, I did. I did. So I went into live events and I got really focused on that. I wasn't focused on the online side of things at all. You know, I actually grew that, that offline seminar business to roughly a million dollars a year. And I was, when was this? I was like maybe 23, 24 at the time. So everyone was like, wow, you're doing so well. Like you're so lucky, all this kind of stuff. And what's really interesting is that I remember, um, I remember a moment where I was standing outside of a room and there was about 
40, 50 people in the room and they'd each invested about $5,000 to come in and be at this training rate. And I remember standing outside and in the pit of my stomach, I did not want to go inside and I didn't want to do it. And I remember listening to that and catching that and being like, what is this? Like, why am I not grateful? You know, what's going on with me? Like, I need to sort this out. But as so I, of course I went in and I fulfilled the event, but I actually went to Bali for four weeks after that. And I spent so much time tuning in and really asking myself, like, what is going on? And I figured out that the way I'd created that business, there was some things slightly out of alignment. And firstly, you know, it didn't click with my lifestyle goals. I wanted to work from my laptop. I wanted to travel the world. I had to be in Australia or New Zealand, the way I'd structured these lives. Right. Events, right? Yes. And then second to that, I could only fit so many people in the room. Again, the way we were doing it wasn't Tony Robbins. It was small rooms, right? And so I thought, you know, I really want to impact millions of people. And and so I did the crazy thing, which I'm so grateful for now, but everyone told me I was insane. I actually shut down that business. I walked away from it. I didn't even phase it out in a smart, logical way. I was just like, that's out of alignment. I'm going to go. And that's when I transitioned online. And I literally said, okay, I'm going to do this in a way where it feels super aligned, where it feels super good. And then that's when I launched my personal brand, which you see now, which is Regan Hillier International. I didn't take any of my clients across. I, I was literally just like, I'm just going to do this. So it feels really good. <laughs> right. I knew nothing about online business. Wow. I didn't know how to run a webinar. I didn't understand social media. I had no following. Like I was literally like, okay, I'm going to start the scratch. Um, but for me, like, again, listening to myself within, it was the best decision I ever made. So I, I think this is really something that's so important for people to pay attention to here as well as you talking about that other people said, don't do it. But you knew within yourself that this was something that you had to do. You right. knew that what you were doing was not working for you. And that you knew that's what you're where you were leading. And I'm going to guess that most people tuning in have had a moment where they wanted to do something and maybe they got talked out of some, an idea but from their family, from their friends, from somebody in their life, talking them out of something that they knew. And so I love how you just explained that, I, which is extremely brave for you to give up something that's been so successful, right. that was working so well for you, but trusting yourself so much so that you knew that you were going to be able to move on the online space and be able to create that success there. Totally. And and I think people need to know that. Like there's a lot of talk about alignment right now. It's kind of a buzzword, right? Mm -hmm. In this industry. And it's like, yeah, live a life of alignment, but alignment's not always easy, you know, and it's not always convenient. Yes. And sometimes alignment is walking away from something. Sometimes alignment is saying no when everyone thinks you should say yes. You know, it's it, those are the moments where you really get to choose alignment. And I promise you, like if you listen and if you distance, if you're feeling like I don't know whether this is the right next step for me. I always tune in and I ask myself, okay, does this feel out of alignment or am I just scared about the next step? That's right? Big distinction. <laughs> right. Big distinction. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you feel it in your body because it's like, no, 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 this feels really good. I really want it, but I'm just terrified about what it would mean if it was actually successful or how to do it or can I hire the team or whatever is coming up for you, right? Or it's like, you know what? No, I'm just bored. I'm done and I want to launch something new, right? And so I think the key with alignment as well is also not to overthink it. And it's really just to be like going with that gut and choosing it and really trusting that the world is pulling you in the right direction. So obviously if it's a fair thing, you want to do the internal work around overcoming that. And if you want to be more excited, I'd connect back to why are you doing it? Like, what's your vision with this? Like, what's the whole point of it? And I think people can lose sight of that. And it's so easy to get caught in the details and how many people in this launch and, you know, all the logistical stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, like, why are you doing this? Like, what's the point of it? Keep the main thing, the main thing and continuously come back to that. I know for me, if I fall in those places, I'm like, well, what's the main thing? My main thing is sharing my message and what's my message. And I, I really get into this deep space of remembering why I'm here, you know. Yeah, and speaking of, speaking about message, some people that, you know, they've gotten started, they're following, um, they're following these clues, they're following what feels good, they're mm -hmm. starting to build this business, and, um, and then they're kind of having that check-in with themselves, as in, okay, this feels good, I'm following this, I'm taking these steps, and then they have um, the stumbling blocks that might come up along uh -huh. the way and they have those moments and they lose that inspiration or they lose that vision or they're not clear on what their main vision is or that message. What are some things that you think to tie people back to that main message, like their core message, what they're really there for? Mm. How, could, how can people tie into that if, they're not, if they don't really know what that is yet or they're kind of feel like they're moving towards it 
and um, and they're not sure they're not sure what it is yeah definitely and and I believe often when when those like moments of stumbling or roadblocks come up often the world's just kind of shaking you around a little bit to prepare you for the next step to prepare mm-hmm. you for the next season you know because you only get in life what you can handle at the end of the day and and if you're asking for big things if you're asking to make millions of dollars and impact millions of people then you need to be that version of yourself first it's going to be nothing to do with what you do or what you know or how many books you read but it's going to be everything to do with how you're being energetically and day to day right and so it's kind of like the world's pushing you a little bit and going hey like if we throw this at you can you handle it if we throw this at you can you stay focused if you if we throw this at you can you stay grounded in your vision and really commit to it still and and this is what will separate people that will rise and be really successful and others that will be like ah it's not for me and run away and go back to their nine to five job or go back to playing small or doing the things that they're bored with or whatever it is right and so I think when this comes up just spend the time going within spend the time and I don't mind how you do it it might be meditating or journaling or talking it out with a friend or a coach it doesn't really matter how but tune in and ask yourself like what do I really want you know so many people don't ask themselves that they're not clear on that or they have a fluffy answer like financial freedom well what does that mean how much money is that is that another hundred dollars like what is that right yeah. what is my big vision why do I want this vision like why does this really excite me what gets me out of bed in the morning and I know they're really big questions um, but you need to ask them and guess what you need to ask them regularly because if you're anything like me you're gonna grow quickly right it changes. yeah it changes and and I think that's a big thing to touch on Christina because so many people People go ah but this stuff is coming up and I feel like this is my vision but three months ago it was completely different and that's yeah. okay like you're not pouring concrete on your vision you're not being like here's my vision and there it is and there's my five-year plan and it has to stay the same visions are fluid life is fluid you change you totally. evolve you learn you see the world through different eyes like you need to be flexible with playing into that but I think asking those big questions and being kind on yourself if you want to change the direction is okay like you're just accountable to yourself at the end of the day I think that just takes so much pressure off, right? Mm. That it doesn't have, it's not like you're locked in that this is it forever and you cannot, you can never change it. People live by all these rules. Yeah, they have all these rules (laughs) that it's like, oh, like this is my vision and now I have to stick to it. It's like, why? Change it. If it feels better, change it, right? Yeah, I love that. (laughs) So if you're going to leave people with one sort of actionable step or one key takeaway that you want to leave them with today, what would it be? I think the biggest thing is having people remember that they absolutely can have it all and they can have it all on their terms right now in whatever way that looks like for them. So whatever it is that they want to create in their business, whatever point they want to scale to, whatever products or services they want to launch, they really need to come back to asking themselves, okay, what do I want? Why do I want this? And then simply start doing the internal work to align to that, trusting that anything you then do on the outside is going to line you up and take you right there. That's, that's wonderful. That's beautiful. That's yeah. so true. I love it. So on that note, you do have a free gift to share with everyone. Want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to give everyone access to um, an amazing thing about manifestation that I have online. So this really breaks down all the internal work that I've been talking about, actually. You know, all the things where we talk about going within and becoming an energetic match and getting an alignment. And it just breaks you through this. And it's really simple and easy to go through. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you'll get the link out to everyone. But it's super powerful content. Fabulous. So you guys can go ahead and click the link below and pick that up. Make sure that you do. And I can't emphasize enough that, you know, whether you already know that mindset is huge and, and to having this personal development, the softer side of things, if you already know that, or some of you that might be thinking, I just want the tactics and the strategy. This really is such an important piece of you developing as a person. So I highly recommend that you go pick up that freebie right away and get started working towards that. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, you're so welcome. It's been awesome. Yeah, and those of you guys tuning in, be sure to come back for the next interview in the Scaling for Passive Profit series. Bye. Awesome. Ciao. Cool. I never know when it's going to end. I know. It's like, are you done? (laughs) Freeze frame. (laughs) So cool. Awesome. That was wonderful. Thank you. You're so welcome. And I know it's something that the like mindset stuff is so, so important. And I can't emphasize enough to people how important it is. And it's so often overlooked. So I really hope that they get a ton totally. of value from, yeah, no, from this interview. Awesome. So cool. And I love too how it's, um, you know, I, I really love how um, in the interview too, just going through about really creating that ease 
and it doesn't have to be a certain way and it doesn't have to be and you know it took me a heck of a long time to figure that out too because I used to be so regimented too me too right and I'm like if someone would have told me that I know (laughs) can you imagine (laughs) I know I know I'm with you (laughs) it's just been so much easier so thank you it's been a pleasure cool so we we moved you because we had to move the interview date Mm -hmm. um so Jocelyn I guess we'll follow up with your team I think we moved you to the 10 I believe um yeah so share away and then next week we're gonna do um uh, we did a freebie page for all of the speakers as well. So uh-huh. after the summit's over, we're still going to send people to the freebie page where they can download all of the freebies just Perfect. to get extra exposure. And then um, the following weekend after, we're going to do like the weekend of replays too, so people get another okay. chance. Cool. Sounds yeah. perfect. Yay. Awesome. Amazing. Thanks for coming on. You're so welcome. Thanks for asking brilliant questions. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Have a fabulous day. And I'm going to go, go, I have my mastermind group meeting here. So Yay. We'll, we'll enjoy. Yeah. And keep me posted. Tonight. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All, All right, right love. We'll See ya. Bye. Bye. What's up, guys? What's up, Facebook, YouTube? I've got two cameras going. How exciting is that? Let me see if I can. Oh, yeah, YouTube's still going. What's up? Hey, who's on here? You guys can um, ask me any questions that you desire. I can hang out with you guys for a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What's up? Thank you so much. You're welcome, Teresa. Ah, Jane, when you say location free, what does that mean in your business? Okay, for me, it basically means. Um, that I can work from anywhere that I choose. So for example, right now I am in, let me put this down, here we go. Right now I am in Kauai, in um, Hawaii, and I was in Maui just before that, and then I head over to Costa Rica in a couple of days, and then I go to LA, and then I go to Peru, and then I go to Bali, and then I go to New Zealand, and then I can't remember. Um, So basically, (laughs) it doesn't matter where I am, as long as I have my laptop and an internet connection, I can run my business, which is very cool. So that's what it means for me. Pile of goddess, you're a goddess, Becky. Nice to have you on. What's up, Jennifer? What's up, Mandy? What's up, Lucky Fetish Shop? What's up, Allie? Hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Awesome. What's up, Brenda? Hey, William. Super cool. You're from Birmingham, Alabama. Amazing. Looks like you're in an amazing place. I am. I am in. I'll show you guys, actually. It's oh, it's a little bit cloudy outside here, but I'm in Kauai, and I'm on this amazing golf course. I don't know whether you guys can see, but there's a lot of nature and um, a lot of golf coursing. <laughs> Is that a thing? No. A lot of golfing. <laughs> sorry, YouTube, you didn't get taken for... I, f- I forgot YouTube was on here too. I'm sorry. YouTube, you can watch me talk to Facebook. Um, I wasn't kind for YouTube, but I'll get to YouTube in a second. Hey, Steve, what's up? What's up, Alexi? If you guys have questions for me, um, you can <laughs> multitask me like a fucking queen. I know, right? Becky appreciates, I'm just letting YouTube know that Becky appreciates my multitasking right now. Um, what's up, Allison? Hi from Brisbane. Hey, guys. Cool. Well, it doesn't look like anyone else has questions. If you do, um, I will check in on them um, after this is gone from live and I will type your answers to you. That goes for you too, YouTube. Um, awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Awesome hanging out with you. Um feel like I am definitely winning with two cameras right now. So we had like the interview, then Facebook Live, then YouTube Live going here. Questions. All right, I'm still here. Jane, how do you manage your virtual teams across the world to structure your business? Okay, that's an awesome question. I actually have a training, um, which I may be releasing soon. I'm not meant to tell you that I'm releasing it soon. Um, But it's all about how to build your soulmate team. Um, How do I do it? Well, in the beginning, I just started with one VA and one assistant um, that would basically work um, hour by hour, just a few hours. Like I had someone, I think, like five hours a week maybe, and that was it, right? So it started there, just so you guys know. Um, We now have over 30 um, people at Regan Hillier International, and they're all over the world. I think we're in like 11 different countries in terms of our staff. Yeah, Becky, it's a great training. It is. I think the team's about to um, re-release it, which is cool. Um, Yeah, and so we have people all over the world. They're working in all different time zones. They work from their laptops. I'm not sure what you want to know in terms of the structure. There's obviously a lot of details, but long story short, I have an 
amazing team manager. I then have different departments um, and leaders of those departments, and then the people in those departments report to their leaders or managers, and then those core management team report to my team manager. So I only talk to my team manager. Now, of course, I might talk to a couple of people here and there about some details, and I talk to my executive assistant, my beautiful executive assistant as well, um, but that's basically it. So I don't talk to 32, 33 people, however many people we have every day. Um, I literally talked to my one team manager, Lauren, and um, and that's it. And then other than that, just answer little questions here and there, but her job is to run the team. So let me know if that um, helps. Um, let me check in on these questions. Let me know if that helps, Jane, um, and if that gives you some clarity. Okay, Teresa, I know when you said financial freedom uh, when you said financial freedom is fluffy, I totally understand that, but for some reason I can't put my words uh, I can't put into words my why or my purpose. Okay, so it sounds like you just need to spend some more time tuning in. It, it really sounds like you need to spend some more time asking yourself like what really excites you and if there were no limitations or no sense of how do I do that or no sense of is that possible then what would you want to be what would you want to do what would you want to create and and you might want to look um, to other people for inspiration now I'm not saying you need to ask permission or do what they do exactly um, but you might you might for example follow someone online and go wow they're really inspiring I would love to help that many people each year as well or you might look at an amazing speaker on stage and go wow you know they're really inspiring like I'd love to speak to that many people um, you might look at someone else and think wow you know what I'd love to do that I'd love to do that with my family so you can draw inspiration from other people um, just remember there's no right or wrong I think the big thing to know is that as children um, <laughs> we were all such big dreamers and we had amazing imaginations and we were totally tapped into manifestation and we could create anything that we desire, right? But then we got it shut down at school and by our families and we were told to stop daydreaming and do this and like join the dots and follow the system and learn all these things that we don't even need to know in life, right? And so we shut down our natural magical abilities. So you guys don't need to know anything more. I don't have anything more to teach you, but you have everything to remember. So I think Teresa the biggest thing is really giving you permission just to remember how powerful you actually are and how deeply you can tap into your superpowers and you can have anything you want in your life. If someone came over with a magic wand and said, here you go, Teresa, wave it. What do you want? What would you wave? What would you wish for? What would you ask for? Right? And it doesn't matter if it's just one thing. It doesn't matter if you've got a book of a hundred things. All is welcome. You get to have all of it. You get to be all of it. Let me know if that helps you. Amazing. You're super passionate about that. Awesome. Well, there you go. You do know what you're passionate about. <laughs> Jane says, thank you. Much appreciated. Awesome. Becky, how did you come up with the seamless strategy to be an overachiever at showing up? I've never seen anyone be in so many places simultaneously. What, well, Becky, I know how to shape shift. I know how to time travel. I know how to teleport. <laughs> oh, you mean online. All right, okay, I understand. Well, right now, for example, um, I, I, love, I love leverage. So I love, 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 love um, always thinking about how can I create more leverage in my life and my business? How can I do less but be more, right? Like I'm always answering that question. So for example, I just did this media interview. A lot of people would have just done the media interview, but I can't really show you guys. Well, I can kind of. So I'll show you this. So you're on Facebook Live right now. So you're on one phone. Can you see this here? Then I have my laptop, which was on the interview. And then I have another phone going here, which is on YouTube Live. Um, then what will happen is my team will basically get this, get this video and this content, um, and they'll share it across to all the different platforms. They'll then take this video and they'll, they'll take, actually I saw my video guy Colin jump on earlier, um, and they'll take little pieces and sections and they'll chop it up and mash it up and put it with other videos. They'll then take something that I say in here and take one or two lines and turn it into a little one line of Facebook post. So we're always looking for how can we leverage, how can we utilize, like honestly guys, like one half an hour interview or video should be like 10 to 20 places on the internet, right? You shouldn't be sitting down going, now I'll do YouTube, now I'll do Instagram, now I'll do this, like you can really repurpose repurpose and if we look beyond the strategy it's a choice right it's a choice like like I write down all the time like I'm the queen of the internet and I just choose that I'm gonna be everywhere I'm choose that my message is gonna be seen and felt and heard by millions and um, one thing that I do is always spread all over the freaking internet so all of that is a choice and all of that's an identity then I act from that place and then I put the systems in place in order to support that let me know if that helps <laughs> yay 
Theo, how do you keep your vibe on all the time? You love my sense of humor. Thank you, Teresa. I'm glad I'm slightly entertaining for you guys. <laughs> how do you keep your vibe on all the time? I don't think I am on all the time. I have days where I'm human. Well, I'm human every day, but I have days where I feel sad. I have days where I feel um, disconnected and weird and kind of unmotivated. I have days where I feel frustrated, like I want to kill the whole world. Um, I'm just a normal human and I show up online and I bring those different elements to my business as well. So maybe instead of how do I have my vibe on all the time, like how do I naturally share my vibe all the time? You know, if you read a, a post of mine, sometimes it's like, really like wow like intense and motivational sometimes it's like really deep and like connected and spiritual sometimes it's like hey like i'm feeling disconnected today you know so i i really love sharing all these different parts of myself i also give myself permission to go into all the vibes because you know i don't want to be this perfect shiny person that appears that they feel nothing like i want to be able to feel everything and feel all of it and you know if you were on this video earlier you would have heard I shared that there was a moment where I numbed everything. Like I, I numbed being able to feel fear. I numbed being able to feel sadness. I had someone ask me like three or four years ago and they're like, Regan, um, what makes you sad? When are you sad? And I'm like, I'm not sad. And they were like, mm, okay, that's weird. Um, when are you angry? And I'm like, not angry. Don't feel anger. <laughs> like I was so numb. I was literally so numb. But here's what I didn't realize. Okay. I didn't realize a few things. One, because I was numbing those emotions emotions are energy so they have to go somewhere right so what was I doing I was putting it in my body I was making myself sick I was getting aches and pains everywhere right because I wasn't transforming and putting out the emotion I was storing it inside by not feeling it right the other thing that was happening is that because I was numbing all the bad emotions which weren't even bad like fear sadness all the stuff I was numbing that I was also numbing the love the gratitude the bliss the pleasure all the good stuff right now I didn't know I was numbing that because I still felt good I was like I don't feel angry and fearful and sad so I feel really good everything's fine but the minute I started reconnecting with the bad emotions <laughs> which aren't right and re-feeling the sadness and the fear and all this stuff the love and the bliss and everything else just started freaking blowing up and I was like does anyone know how good it feels to feel good right because I wasn't fully feeling that because I was numbed if you numb one emotion you numb it across the freaking board all right you guys getting this I think I need some love for all of that like there was a there was a long answer to your question Theo but I hope it helps my vibe is not on all the time however I'm constantly choosing of course to be in the best, best vibration possible but not at the expense of not being human not at the expense of numbing myself Okay. Amazing. All right. Love from Becky. I'm complete. <laughs> I don't know who the rest of you are, but Becky's sending you love, so it's all okay. <laughs> all right, guys. It looks like... Um it looks like we're complete. I can't see any more questions. Um, if you loved this, please tag someone below who needs to see it. Share this if you want. Um, if you think this has been valuable content and you want to share it. If you're on YouTube, I'm looking at YouTube. If you're on YouTube, please hit subscribe. I'm putting more and more um, content right now on my YouTube channel. I have neglected my YouTube channel for years, um, but I'm back. So watch out because there's going to be amazing content on there. And um, yeah, if you guys want different, unique content, I'm now posting um, other stuff on YouTube. So you guys can head on over. The channel is called... Regan Hillier. I hope you can find it. Thank you so much for that answer. Yay! You're awesome, Theo. You're awesome, Becky. I love you too. Amazing. All right. Thanks for being on, guys. You guys are awesome, 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 awesome. Sending you so much love. And of course, remember, you absolutely can't have it all. Mwah.